When you visit a website or send an email, how does your device know where to send the data? It all comes down to one thing, port numbers, the secret routing codes of the internet. Let's decode them. Welcome back to Everlast Cyber. We have been going through the Networking Basics series, so if you missed any of the videos, check the playlist and catch up. Thinking back to the TCP, IP model, remember we're going through the layers as if we were sending data, so it is moving from top to bottom. In the last video, we looked at TCP and UDP, which are the Layer 4 protocols. Layer 4 is also responsible for choosing port numbers, and we will looking at that in a bit more detail. So, why do we need port numbers? Let's say you live in this house. You will probably want to receive your post here. When the postman comes, your letters can be put through the letterbox. The letterbox gives the postal service access to your house, and computers work in the same way. In this case, the post is the application data, while the letterbox is the port number for that application. It gives access to your computer for that service. Now, instead of a house, it might be a server, and this server could be running a mail, web, or any other service we want to send data to. Network applications work in the same way. If you want to communicate over a network, you must allow some means of access to your device. Let's say we want to access a web server. We type in the web address also known as a URL of the site we want to visit. The first thing the computer does is to convert that URL into an IP address. This is done by using DNS. We will not talk so much about that in this video as we will cover it in another video. For now, just know it converts web addresses to IP addresses. The computer then sends the request to the web server. But this server might not just be hosting a website using HTTP. It may also be a mail server using SMTP or even a file server using FTP. So, how does the server know which application to send the request to? Well, these applications have something called a well-known port number assigned to them. HTTP is assigned port number 80, SMTP is assigned port number 25, and FTP is assigned port number 20 and 21. So, because the port numbers are standard numbers, all computers will know about them. When we made our web request, our computer knew we were trying to access an HTTP site. So, it added the destination port number 80 to the TCP header. The computer will also choose a randomly generated source port to receive replies on. It is sent to the web server's IP address and the well-known port for that service. The IP address and port number are often written like this. It's the IP address, a colon, then the destination port number. The server will receive this request, look at the destination port number, realize the request is for the web application, and pass it to that application, the server would then respond. This time, the port numbers are reversed, the destination port is now the randomly generated one, and the source port is our well-known port number 80. Again, when we receive this response, our computer looks at the port number. The port number lets our computer know which application to send it to, and in this case, our browser, and even which tab of that browser to display it on. So, the IP address gets the data to the computer, but it's the port number that gets the data to the right application. This is a simplified version of how this works, just to give you an idea about port numbers, what they're used for, and how they work. Now, Let's look at well-known port numbers in some more detail. There are several port numbers that are called well-known ports. These are common protocols that have been assigned port numbers. Here is a very small list of some of the most common ones you'll find. We have things like HTTP port 80, HTTP port 443, SMTP port 25, and the list goes on and on. It is important to learn these ports not only for the exam but also for your everyday troubleshooting. 
you may be looking at a packet capture and you'll need to know what type of traffic you're looking at. If you see communication with an IP address on port 53, you'll know it's DNS traffic. Note that this is by no means a complete list. In fact, port numbers 0 through 1023 are well-known port numbers. Thankfully, we only really need to know the more common ones. There are also ports ranging from 1024 to 49151. These are registered ports that companies have registered. And finally, we have ports 49,152 through 65,535, which are dynamically assigned ports. These are used to randomly generate unique port numbers for that local computer that it can use as its source port. So, to give you something to try at home, let's see these ports in action. If you were to go and open a web browser and visit any website you want, for instance, everlastcyber.com, and then open up or shell on your Windows computer. If you then type netstat to show all the current connections and, and to show the numeric values, you would then see your computer's connections. You will see the protocol being used, the local address, which means your computer's address. Note that it shows a colon and a port number. In this case, it's our source port. It also shows the foreign address, which is, is the IP address of the device you're connecting to. This also has the port number here. It's our destination and well-known port number of 80. Now, most websites you see today will be using HTTPS rather than HTTP, which uses port number for 143. HTTPS means the traffic will be encrypted between you and the web server. We can also manually change the port we connect to. For example, if I type everlastcyber.com colon 80, it takes us to our maintenance page. But if instead I wanted to go to everlastcyber.com colon 53, which is the port number for DNS, the site can't be reached because the server is not sending the request to that web application. In fact, it is trying to send the request to a DNS service that isn't running on this web server. So that's it for port numbers go and take a look at your own connections and port numbers being used. If you liked this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.